You're listening to the audio portion of Workshop Wednesdays. Workshop Wednesdays is a free live discussion about topics affecting accountants, bookkeepers, and business owners. You can join the ABO group in Facebook to participate live Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Just search for ABBO in Facebook. This podcast is brought to you by SchoolofBookkeeping.com, where you will learn, grow, and build a thriving bookkeeping practice. We have hundreds of lessons with almost every aspect of the industry. Start your free month today at SchoolofBookkeeping.com. All right, Gary, finish chewing. (laughs) That was the fastest lunch (laughs) I think anyone I've seen anyone ever eat in 30 seconds. (laughs) Yes, it's amazing what I can do under pressure. Well, welcome to another Workshop Wednesday. Uh, I'm Dan DeLong, uh, here with, of course, as always. Oh, Carrie, Carrie Khan, mine goes, oops. <laughs> Seems like one of your streams is having a connection problem, so I got tangled up in that. Oh, okay. You were... <laughs> <laughs> and then we're also joined by our orange guest, Travis. Aren't you glad <laughs> he's here? <laughs> so, so, yes, we are uh, continuing our, our series in... Uh, sales tax fundamentals. I know it's very the exciting. The most exciting topic. We make it fun. <laughs> we put the fun right. in sales tax. <laughs> we, we'll try. We'll do our best. <laughs> so last week we talked about Nexus. And Nexus is all about determining whether or not you are subject <laughs> to even filing uh, sales tax. Um, and so today, uh, you know, we, we kind of left off and, and talking about in, in terms of sales tax, uh, there's there's really three, potentially four. So f- the fourth one is kind of the why of the vowels <laughs> sometimes, right? <laughs> uh, but there's really four, th- uh, three or four things that that fall into uh, needing to needing to understand, and we wanted to kind of unpack those. So the what you sell, who you sell it to, and where you sell it, <laughs> and then the sometimes okay. is is when. <laughs> when you sell it, because there may be some date-driven uh, uh, action here, so we'll we'll kind of unpack all of those things as we as we go through these topics. Uh, so, Travis, uh, since you're our sales tax expert of the three of us, we're <laughs> um, dangerous. <laughs> yeah. What, what what is the importance of what it is knowing what it is that you sell and how that impacts uh, sales tax? Yeah, great question. So the importance of that is, you know, there's some things like just that fall under that category, tangible personal property or TPP that are basically just taxable everywhere. So if you have Nexus, you know, it's a taxable sale, you know, as long as your customer's taxable, you need to collect the tax. But there's there's other things out there, right, that may have varying taxability, um, or maybe it's just exempt in most states. So you know, depending on the state you're selling your product or service to, it could be taxable, it could be exempt, right? Like, so some good examples of that are like software, clothing. I think we, you know, talked about labor, labor, right? Yep. Labor. Yeah. Services, service-based businesses are great. You know, that's a great example of that. So when you say, when you say varying taxability, are you talking about that it could uh, the the tax rate could vary or it differs from other other products that you sell. Uh, no, what I mean by that is it just it varies from state to state. So depending ah, okay. on what that product or service <laughs> is in the state you're shipping it to, or if it's a service like let's say it's SaaS, you know wherever your customer's located, it could be taxable, it could be exempt. It just depends on the state or sometimes the specific jurisdiction. You know. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's it's taxable. Oh, Colorado at the, has at the, the local level. <laughs> yep, yep. Or like Chicago actually is a great example of that. Like it, in the state of Illinois, SAS is exempt. But if your customer is in the city limits of Chicago, there's something called Chicago lease tax on on SAS. So there there's some of those complexities there. It just it depends on what that product or service is that you're selling and the state you're selling to. Um, you know, could be taxable, could be exempt, could be partially taxable. Um, there's some funny rules that, that some states have as well. So, so like if I if I if I sell something, right? If I if I'm selling uh, something, how do you know what is the 
what is the uh, be all and end all, I guess, of determining what that what that is as far as a, a taxable category? You know, like, uh, do I make it up? Is there <laughs> is there a yeah. reason? Like in 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 some cases, like you know, these this AirPod case. I mean, that's that's a tangible. tangible hard yeah, good that's right? probably kind of tbp thing. yeah yeah I, I have some too <laughs> so <laughs> um so i i mean it, if if you if it's something you're managing on your own right like you're you know if, if you're using quickbooks you're you're going to have to maintain that taxability and you're going to have to have that knowledge you know chances are you know a lot of these businesses that i work with don't have a, a tax department that's researching hey how is our product or service taxed in all these states? But I mean, that's basically what you're faced with, right? And and maintaining the the taxability in your system in QuickBooks and your e-commerce platform, what have you, you're having to tell your system, okay, the, these products are taxable or these services are exempt, things like that. Um, the way Avalara does it is a little different. I don't know if you want to get into that yet, Ben, but we you know have proprietary tax codes that we maintain. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we know, you know, we've done the research on how these different products or services are taxable um, in every state, every jurisdiction across North America. Yeah. So let's let's talk a little bit about that. And, and um, I don't know, do you want to share uh, or, or maybe should I share my screen so we can take yeah, a look? Let me, at the... Yeah, let me drop the link to our public facing site where you can search for all of our tax codes. Okay, yeah. Drop that in the chat. Okay. We're going to throw that out on our external chat so that uh, anybody who happens to watch this uh, wants to use it as a as a resource. So let me go ahead yep. and share my screen here and hopefully then let's see, let's see get the right one here. And that's the messy one. So let me just drag this over here. <laughs> Make it bigger. OK, so this is, this is the. The Avalara text code search. What um, what does that mean? What <laughs> yeah. So so with us, you know, with our with our solution, with our tax engine, you know, we need to know what it is that you're selling when it when it hits our tax engine, right? And so the way we do that is is through our tax codes, um, and we we keep all of the content up to date behind those tax codes. So let's say like. You know, a state all of a sudden says, hey, we're now taxing SAS. Well, we're maintaining all that behind our tax codes. So, you know, you as a business owner that's, you know, doesn't have a big tax department, doesn't have to constantly research that and, you know, update those things in, in QuickBooks or, you know, whatever your systems are. Right. So, you know, we would we would help them do a one time mapping of our tax codes to their item codes so we know what it is and, and we can. Mm -hmm you know, apply the appropriate tax treatment. So, you know, if you look on here, there's, there's most of these categories are stuff that does have varying taxability, like freight. That's, oh. that's a great example. Oh, shipping yeah. and handling, right. Like some States actually tax the shipping and handling as well as the goods that you're shipping. Some yep. States don't some, right. Some States is, it's exempt. You know, if you look in here, we have things like um, digital products, software, clothing, you know, that's clothing is another great example. Some states mm -hmm. tax it. Some states it's exempt. Some states it's uh, partially uh, exempt. <laughs> and subscriptions is one. Um, these yeah. I used to do sales tax a long time ago, and it was just literally worked at an IT firm, kind of ended up going into the QuickBooks land. But they sold, um, what do they call them? They sold contract, hardware contracts to, if their equipment went down, they just paid like a prepay, almost like an insurance policy. And uh, and there was a whole lot of is this taxable or not? And I believe over the years it became taxable. And at one point they didn't think it was. So yep. um, they had to adjust their workflow to, to catch that. Now, these these tax codes that actually are, cre uh, are that come up here, uh, those are actually your code. Right. And as far as Avalar is concerned, it's not like a universal uh, tax code. Right. Yeah, that's right. So these are, yeah, it wouldn't be a universal tax code. That wouldn't mean anything to, you know, any state department of revenue, right? Those are just our proprietary tax codes. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to have, you know, our tax code for SAS, which would be SWO5000 or something, you know, for the, right. as an example, right? 
Um, and we're, we're constantly maintaining the content. Like, so to Carrie's point, like a subscription or what have you, a state changes their law around that and is now all of a sudden taxing it. Well, if you have Avatax connected with QuickBooks and you have mapped our proprietary tax codes, to your item codes, that's not something that you're having to constantly go in and maintain or do the research. Hey, do I need to update uh, this item to make it taxable or exempt, you know, in this state, or let's say your nexus is expanding and you're getting registered and starting to collect in more and more states. And, you know, going into that new state, you don't, you may not know how they tax your specific products or services. Right. So that's, that's a huge challenge is, you know, triggering nexus into new states and going into that uncharted territory or just the states you're already filing in laws are changing. Right. So yeah. are you are you finding when you guys go through an implementation that the customer is a little bit lost and, you know, didn't like my my um, it was actually my parents owned the business. They didn't realize that, oh, this, you know, uh, hardware contract is taxable um, and freight's taxable. We had to go through and set our whole, you know, change our system when we realized it. Um, I can imagine if we'd said you know, before they retired, hey, let's set up here that you may have discovered stuff along our implementation that we needed to fix. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, hey, people might have to change internal processes on how they invoice. Maybe they have a bunch of things that are bundled together that, you know, there's some products and services where, you know, if they have separate tax treatment, you may have to change that process a little bit and you know, break some things out. Yeah. That's a really, that brings up a really hot topic for our partners. Yeah. Right, Dan? Yeah, well, wanna, I mean, that's, that's probably uh, something that we're going to uh, save for like the okay. last topic. The of, <laughs> you know, when that's, we, that's, when we the, that's the, mo these, the most advanced series. Yeah, the, of the series. The, like there we go. The, the, the weird, wacky, wild world of, of sales tax and, and what it, what it means to like people who bundle their services, uh, because yeah. a lot of people will, will tend to do that. But I'm just using it as an example here. So uh, I chose freight as a, as as one of the options, and then it gives you the uh, the specifics uh, about that. Like if it's delivery by a company vehicle, delivery by a company vehicle before the passage of title, wow. those are the, those terms are 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 categories that that are coming from tax agencies. Is that right, uh, Travis? Correct. Yeah. So the reason why we would have different tax codes is because those little details could could change the way the taxability of it in a state. Right. So, you know, and that's something we, we work with our customers on. Ultimately, like we can't select the tax code for you, but right. the, that site's intuitive. You'll have we have taxability specialists over here where we can, you know, walk folks through that and narrow it down to, OK, it's most likely going to be this tax code that most closely aligns with your service. Right. But yeah, that just shows the complexity just on shipping and handling. Um, the title and stuff. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. but I, I, this, I mean, this, I could see this actually being useful for somebody even not using Avalara, right. Because it could at least give them uh, an, uh, 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 some, some kind of guidance as, as determining, okay, you know, I can look at delivery by company vehicle before passage of title, and then it gives me a little bit more uh, details about that specific uh, 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 type of activity. And I can say, oh, well, that that applies to me or it doesn't. And then if I'm not using Avalara, I, you know, the next step, if, if I am using Avalara, is I get this little uh, code right here, FR0101100. <laughs> and then I put that into Avalara for, for the items that that are part of that, right? Yeah. Um, but at least I have a better understanding as to what it is I actually do sell and that the activity of me doing that sale, like, uh, you know, that, that particular item itself might have a different tax implication and I can take that to wherever I am setting up my sales tax and see yep. if that fits. If it doesn't, well, I know that Avalara can handle that for me. Right. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. it's like a, it's like a win-win, right? Like, you know, I was like, okay, if I, at least I know, right. At least I know what, uh, what that taxability might entail. And if I can't set it up in the system that I am using to track my sales tax, I know that there is an option at least available that does because they have this code associated with it. Yep. 
Exactly right. And, you know, I would have to venture to guess there's probably a lot of folks out there that just, hey, maybe they just tax everything. Maybe they're selling products like yeah. it's tangible personal property that's basically taxable everywhere. And then they're also just taxing the shipping everywhere. Or maybe conversely, there's other businesses that are just assumed like, oh, this is a service. So it's exempt everywhere. We, we don't have to worry about collecting tax on yeah, shipping. It's it's not um, that simple as when it comes to, to labor. I mean, uh, you know, labor yeah. versus uh, products um, when it when it comes to, to what you sell. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, maybe something that um, like threshold tax, like how does that, um, is that based off of what it is that you sell? And like, I'm thinking like luxury items that, that yeah, have. Like okay, that. Yeah. That's, I, I was thinking the same thing, Dan. Yeah. So that's, the, there's a funny rule in New York that, that is a really good illustration of that. And, you know, clothing. So again, right there at the top, we have tax codes for clothing because that's a big one that has varying taxability depending on the state where you're selling that clothing or apparel. Um, but New York has this funny rule, right, where clothing is exempt, right? But then as soon as it hits this threshold of, I, this is all from memory, right? This is like $110 or something like that. $110, yeah. So 110 once it's over that, it, it then becomes a luxury item. And oh. You have to pay tax on <laughs> Ew. That's right. Your Air Jordans uh, are not a necessity. But, <laughs> or, I mean, but women's clothes are, are not. There's nothing cheap about women's clothes. You get a pair of pants and they're way too pricey. So I'll have to pay sales tax because they charge me too much. You guys don't have to pay as much for your stuff. But it's only on the amount that's over that, right? <laughs> oh, a portion? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, or if you're my, my wife, it might be the Louis the Louis Vuitton, you know, something like that, which I guess is technically not clothing, but definitely a luxury item. So, you know, so that's another caveat when it comes to, you know, what it is that you sell, um, you know, boats and, and things like that. I know in Florida, they have a weird, uh, weird type of thing with, uh, you know, with those types of uh, those types of things that you sell, but it's also, you know, just important to keep that in mind that when you're, you know, considering what it is that you sell or your or your client sells, if you're if you're assisting a, a client uh, to, to know that that sort of thing, because as we talked last week, all of that burden uh, comes back to who, Travis? Comes back to the seller. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's, so, it's on um, the seller. to You are basically a warden of the state. I mean, if, if you have nexus, meaning, you know, you have tax liability, it's on the seller to collect it and. You know, it, I didn't know is never really a good excuse in the sales tax audit. <laughs> Only flies so far. <laughs> but right. yeah, my, yeah, it sounds like teenagers with their parents. So, you know, we can try it for <laughs> as long as we can. <laughs> yeah. You might get one shot at it. And then after that, it's like, yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is, a, this is a great resource, even if you're not using um, Avalara. But when you are using Avalara, it's... It's super awesome to just go in. You find out. You can uh, oh, let me. I wanted to show one more, one other thing here about it uh, because, like, you have different ways to um, to view things. So, like, if you are coming in here, going into clothing, choosing accessories, uh, you can view them um, by the recommended groupings, right? So, let's this sewing supplies. Okay, that doesn't apply to me. Or uh, clothing and related uh, products for sports and recreational. Okay, so then it, it starts to group those things, so it helps you yep. guide towards what that tax code might actually be. So here's all of those things for sports and recreational equipment. Um, all of those potentially could have uh, different tax implications depending on where you sell it, right? So, um, but this gives you the right. the category of what that actually is. You can then take that. You know, superimpose it over your um, uh, over your, wherever you are setting up your sales tax. See if it aligns, and if it doesn't, then you know you have uh, Avalara to help out uh, if need be, because it can take it to the next uh, to the next level. This has already made me dizzy, so I know I would want help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, t Carrie's just got the um, nope. <laughs> not gonna <laughs> not yeah. gonna venture in there because you certainly don't want to be. Um, you know, on the, on the short end of a, of a, of a tax notice. And it certainly could get you into, um, into, into hot water if yep. that, if it comes to that. 
Yep. No. For sure. Okay. So um, I think that's um, that's a pretty good um, a good workshop on on you know talking about you know, what it is that you do sell. Um, we'll we'll talk again more uh, as we go next week into who you sell it to, uh, because uh, that's going to have yeah. a, a bearing um, as whether it's uh, taxable or not. Um, please be sure to um, to follow us on uh, on YouTube or or, uh, or Facebook wherever you happen to be seeing, uh, so that you can get alerts uh, when we have our next uh, workshop Wednesday, uh, which will be on Wednesday at the same time. <laughs> Uh, but you can get reminded and, and, and join us. So I appreciate uh, appreciate you joining us here today. Um, Travis, always good to see you. And Carrie, always a pleasure. <laughs> yes, and I'll make one more shout out too. If you are interested in Avalair, you want to connect up with Travis through us so that you get the better experience and the, and the uh, all of our discounts that we get. It's a better experience because Avalair is huge, just like Intuit, just like ADP. So we have our special peeps that uh, can get you get you rolling in the right direction. How many, how many employees are there at uh, at Avalara? I heard uh, thousands. Is that? It's it's a lot. Yeah, we're probably trending in that direction. You know, so I I think yeah. low low in thousands. I you know, not eight. It used to be anymore. just it used to just be small back in right. the day. <laughs> yeah, it used to be uh, on on Bainbridge Island. Uh, you know. They're they're uh, close to Seattle now. We're gotten a little bit bigger since then. So, <laughs> so I, fun fact: I'm on the council and uh, got to see your building. It's super cool, huge. <laughs> yeah, right. It's right very next to the Seahawks Stadium. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, across from Seahawks Stadium. It was very neat. Very neat. Yeah. Very good. Fun trip. All right. So we'll see you next time on another uh, workshop Wednesday, and hope you all have a great week. Deal. Sounds Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. See ya.